Hey, my name is Helge Stein. I'm a junior professor here at the Poldus Cluster of Excellence. I'm a battery researcher myself and as it happens as a battery researcher you should drive an electric car and this is in fact mine. So today we're going to drive a little bit around and I'm going to uh, you know uh, tell you a little bit about um, you know some of the aspects uh, that are interesting to battery researchers when they're actually driving electric uh, vehicles like you know what is happening with a battery when it's really cold like it is today we're at minus one degree C um, and uh, some of the funny aspects uh, like you know driving up a mountain and down a mountain uh, at different rates of recuperation when the battery is warm or cold. So in winter uh, you of course have a little problem with batteries because batteries in winter uh, you cannot charge them as fast because that would uh, you know uh, drive you into a situation where you would actually have dendrite growth. Um, so there's actually a limit on how much I can recuperate um, when I'm starting to drive in the morning. Actually my car tells me uh, right now that the battery is relatively uh, cold. Um, it doesn't tell me that there is actually less of uh, capacity in the, in the battery but it uh, does tell me that the uh, limit uh, of how much I can recuperate uh, with one pedal driving um, is uh, not as much as I'm used to and in fact when I start to drive it's actually warning me that um, the recuperation let's say braking power so the deceleration is slightly less than uh, what I'm usually used to when the battery is warm uh, like as if I would be starting in the summer so yeah uh, let's get started Now, one of the beautiful things I believe uh, in owning an electric vehicle is in fact that it's super quiet. Like in the morning when I get up, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't like to have a lot of noise and a lot of rambling of some engine uh, uh, noise, you know. Um, I used to uh, drive a couple of sports cars or even small vehicles. Uh, this is actually uh, much nicer because I can start in the morning, put on some classical music and just enjoy, uh, you know, driving up uh, to work. You know that you have way more power than any gasoline driven car. I mean, this, this car uh, in particular has over 400 horsepower, I believe. Um, but I don't know, you tend to not really use it a lot. Of course, you know, in the, in the beginning time, uh, it's, it's fun to do, but uh, I would actually not uh, recommend, you know, doing all the stupid maneuvers uh, A in a new car and B at all. Now, as we are driving, um, the car is of course consuming energy um, and the, the really cool part in an electric vehicle is that all the heating that is, uh, you know, inside the cabin actually comes from electric heaters that are instantly on. So. Um, I don't know how uh, Daniel here uh, with me feels, but I feel comfortable and warm. In fact, I'm going to decrease a little bit the uh, seat heating because it's getting a little bit warm under my butt. Um, but this is, this is another uh, benefit of, of owning a, a battery electric vehicle. Now, here, as you might be able to tell from the background um, uh, that you see, uh, we are in a fairly new and modern region of Ulm. This is the Eselsberg and uh, just around here in, in the corner, this is actually halfway from uh, the two offices that I have, uh, are some uh, charging uh, stations. These are AC charging stations. And in my honest opinion, uh, you know, most of the discussion that we have in Germany is all about, you know, we need fast charging everywhere, which I believe is uh, simply not true because you don't always need to fast charge. I mean, of course, if you're at the Autobahn, um, that might, might be a true statement. But if you're really, you know, going into the city, uh, you know, go, you're going for a, a short uh, shopping trip or so, um, those DC chargers are super fast, in fact. So um, as it happened uh, on Saturday, I was uh, at the uh, farmer's market with my wife and uh, I think we arrived with something around 30% of battery charge and we left with about 80, um, which is super awesome because here in Ulm we have a, a really excellent network of chargers, not just fast chargers, but a lot of AC chargers. So right now we are driving to the Helmholtz Institute, uh, which is essentially on the other side of the mountain. And uh, there we just uh, so happen to have two different uh, uh, chargers uh, in front of the building. Um, both are AC chargers, so not uh, one of those fancy fast chargers. But uh, anyway, if you're going for a long discussion with your colleagues, 
uh, you might as well charge your car a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, just for the uh, fun of it, we're going to uh, start charging the car a little bit with uh, AC. And as the battery is so cold, we might even be able to see that it's, uh, well, essentially going to uh, start charging the battery at a relatively um, slow pace in the beginning. Now, uh, we have a red wave here uh, uh, in Ulm today because uh, there, there are lots of trains going everywhere, lots of pedestrians, which is of course great. But uh, when, you're, when you're driving, of course, this uh, then takes a long time. Could have almost just taken the tram uh, over to the other office. So we are just gonna go to this uh, nice SVW um, U <laughs> station here uh, and just gonna charge uh, the car a little bit with a normal AC charger. Um, depending on your city, um, there there will be different tariffs. Uh, here in Ulm, we have a pretty uh, neat one because if you're living in Ulm, uh, you qualify essentially for a electricity flat rate, uh, which translates to not a lot of money per month uh, for charging your car, uh, completely with um, water power directly here from the Danube in Ulm. So electric vehicles have you know storage space everywhere because you don't really have a a uh, motor that is as big as in a combustion engine car. So I'm just going to use my frunk and uh, where I actually store my cable. So uh, most electric vehicles nowadays have a so-called uh, Type uh, 2 uh, uh, charging cable. Uh, it's one of those rather big connectors. Um, they uh, actually, this one is uh, pretty neat because it actually tells you that this is L134, that is uh, the ground and even the neutral cable. So you just plug it in and um, then you start charging your car. Um, most uh, electric vehicle drivers actually have uh, more than one card. I, I actually only do own uh, uh, one single card uh, uh, for the city here. Um, it automatically checks my uh, ID and boom, I'm starting to charge. Um, typically how this works is uh, you start charging uh, at a slightly slower speed and then you really bump up to the full, uh, in this case, full 11 kilowatt hours. Now 11 kilowatt hours is not really fast and as you might uh, uh, see now, uh, the battery is at 66% uh, and it tells us that, you know, charging to 90% uh, will take uh, roughly two and a half hours. Now many people will be like, oh, two and a half hours, this is something, this is, this is way too long and in fact I can even change it to a, uh, a uh, to, to a full charge which you shouldn't do and I'm going to talk about this in a, in a second but uh, now it will actually tell me oh for until I go from a full charge so now we're at two-thirds and now going to 100% would take um, three hours and 45 minutes now actually you don't want to go there you don't want to go to a full charge which is mostly because if you had a full charge you're going to um, uh, induce a couple of processes in the battery electrolyte that will uh, lead to the fact that your battery won't last as long. So essentially it works like this. What you're moving around in your battery are the lithium ions. You know, you're moving them from the anode to the cathode or from cathode to the anode, depending on if you're charging on, uh, if you're discharging. Now, if you're doing this at 100% uh, or even uh, close to 0%, um, you drive the system into different states that it doesn't like. So a fully charged battery has the highest voltage possible. Now, if you have the highest voltage possible, uh, you know, around 3.7 volts per single battery cell, what you're actually having there is uh, you're, you're driving the system at a, um, at a potential where you're starting to oxidize your electrolyte. You can only do this so, so often and so much until your battery will actually just die. So always charging to 100% is not really recommended. Um, actually, the manufacturer of this uh, particular vehicle uh, uh, tells you to, uh, well, never really charge it to more than 90%, um, which is uh, typically a setting that I have. Most of the time, I'm actually, uh, well, really charging my battery to 80%. It even says, you know, daily or for a trip. 
Um, in fact, you know, when you're when you're driving those really long distances, and a couple of weeks ago I uh, drove to my family up in the north of Germany, uh, and we're in the very south of Germany here, if, if you don't know the geography of this country. Um, so this was a trip of roughly 800 kilometers, and yeah, of course, before I started that trip, the, the night before, I actually did uh, fully charge the battery. However, if you fully charge your battery, the recuperation of your car doesn't work that efficient anymore because, well, you very close to 100% so you can't charge that much and actually you can't charge the battery that fast and sometimes if you're really you know um, recuperating at a very high degree which comes close to more or less breaking um, then you actually uh, can only do this at uh, let's say less than 90% of, of a battery charge we're gonna see this when we're now driving down the mountain um, of essentially how much uh, uh, well battery capacity we are uh, able to uh, recuperate just from driving down the hill uh, and how much we actually consume when we're driving up the hill. Now actually um, you uh, do feel it um, as a driver of an electric vehicle when it's cold. Um, so I'm actually used to the fact that I only do one pedal driving. Um, now if you're uh, coming from a normal combustion uh, a engine car uh, you might be uh, asking yourself what the heck is uh, one pedal driving so one pedal driving is a uh, pretty neat in the sense that um, you almost never really have to use your brake now this is a pretty damn dangerous uh, area here and um, you actually only use one uh, uh, foot and uh, the nice thing is you know you can drive slow in an electric vehicle but you can also just uh, uh, you know push down the uh, uh, the gas pedal or the uh, electricity pedal which I'm going to do now so uh, just for Daniel to brace himself so we are driving um, 46 70 is allowed so one two three and and this is fun Yeah, so uh, after a small blooper, now we are <laughs> we're essentially back in in business here. So um, I just uh, we, we just dropped off a package at ZSW, one of the partners of uh, Polis, and actually I just started my car and it told me, well, you know, your battery is still relatively cold even though you drove around for a good 15 minutes. Um, so please expect that the um, uh, braking power of the recuperative braking is less than what you're used to uh, and we're going to test that by driving down the Eselsberg and actually we're going to have a look at um, the uh, power consumption so uh, right now um, I drove up and down the mountain and uh, over the weekend I did drive um, uh, a little bit around on the countryside with my wife and so uh, now it actually tells me based on the last uh, 10 kilometers or so I still have a range of the vehicle of roughly 250 kilometers with you know roughly uh, uh, two-thirds uh, of the battery capacity still rema remaining so we're now at 63 percent uh, of uh, battery charge let's see with how much uh, I'm actually uh, uh, coming uh, down the mountain uh, usually this is uh, about a percent more so let's see where we are now, so we're starting with 63%. Uh, we are here up, up on the mountain. Um, this is, uh, this, so the station is uh, essentially the last uh, station of the tram. So this is Science Park 2. Um, this is not the highest tram station in Germany, uh, but uh, let's say it's in the top three. Actually, the highest tram station is two or three stops from here which is Botanischer Garten, so the Botanical Garden of the University of Ulm. Uh, very beautiful, if you're here, uh, you should go there. And now um, what I'm going to do is, I'm so I'm anyway always in um, one pedal driving, this is, this is how I do it. And all I'm doing now as we are decelerating is, in fact, uh, I just let my foot off the gas. And I'm right now not even having my gas on the brake because I don't need to. Um, and uh, now in front of us we of course see a SUV that is uh, polluting the air. 
Now, um, as I'm uh, accelerating, uh, the car is telling me, okay, uh, you know, uh, there's this little black bar uh, that tells me that I'm actually consuming energy by doing so. And then essentially from here on, this is always very nice when you're going down with your bicycle. Um, I have a little green bar that tells me, okay, from now on, I am actually, uh, you know, recuperatively braking. And now I'm actually letting, let off my, letting go of my um, uh, gas uh, pedal. However, uh, the the light just turned red and the braking power when the battery is cold is virtually non-existent in fact when the battery is hot and I can uh, you know put a lot of power into the battery uh, just like I was uh, draining <laughs> uh, power when I was accelerating uh, when the camera uh, flew off um, I can charge as fast so um, and uh, now I'm of course accelerating again and as I'm so now I, I let go of my foot uh, I let go of the um, uh, electric pedal and uh, I'm just uh, recuperatively braking and it, the car would do this now until uh, I com come to a complete stop so there's really nobody uh, behind us so I can do this uh, and this is really you know uh, a way of driving if you do it like this uh, you can uh, I, I did it actually for uh, about a week um, um, the other day this was still in summer and I was even able to get uh, above the uh, WLTP um, rating of this car so I, uh, I was even able to get a full range uh, of about 580 kilometers which I, I think is pretty impressive uh, by you know I'm not hyper mining or anything this is just essentially uh, really driving in such a way that you uh, first of all abide by the laws and um, then of course you really you know uh, as you say in German vorausschauendes Fahren. I don't even know what the what the English word for that is. Um, in fact, I'm one of the uh, few people that can actually claim you know I'm using a electric vehicle as somebody who is commuting a lot uh, because I have of course my uh, laboratories here in Ulm. Um, but I, uh, of course, teach in Karlsruhe, so uh, I have to commute to Karlsruhe. Karlsruhe from Ulm is about 180 kilometers away, so a uh, trip back and forth is uh, a, little, a little under 400 kilometers, depending on uh, if you need to do some details, you know, between the different uh, campus sites, because uh, KIT has two uh, different sites, one in the north, one in the south. And... Um, what I can typically do is if I charge the car to 90%, uh, I can still arrive with about 10% uh, in the evening after lecture. Uh, most of the time what I actually do is I set, a, uh, set the car on a slow charge while I'm teaching. And uh, then when I'm done with teaching, uh, the, the car is typically fully charged. Almost six and a half thousand kilometers with this car now um, in about three months that I own this car and I've never had the feeling that the battery uh, you know oh, oh my god like uh, it's it's essentially uh, empty and I can't get uh, to where I want to be um, actually one of the feelings that I have and uh, maybe I'm a little bit biased because I'm a battery researcher is these batteries nowadays are so large that essentially um, you know you 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 never run out of juice uh, there are it's if you plan a little bit ahead and this is in fact less than I what I used to plan ahead with any of my gasoline driven cars um, if you plan a little bit ahead like okay am I planning a trip of more than uh, 500 kilometers uh, tomorrow uh, that's the amount of planning that I do and I never had uh, anywhere close to an like a range and anxiety oh I'm not uh, going to arrive where I want to be now the really funny part is in fact if you uh, go to the fast chargers and you tell the car that it uh, that it will be at very close to a charge a fast charging uh, session uh, it will actually preheat the battery and uh, that has to do with the fact as uh, what you saw when I drove down the the hill I actually had to use the brake uh, when I was at the uh, red light uh, even though my my plan was to not use the brake uh, sometimes you still have to do it um, but the cool part is that uh, the, the car knows okay uh, if you tell it uh, in the navigation system 
uh, that it's going to have a fast charging session and uh, it will preheat the battery. Um, that is done by uh, essentially, uh, from what I understand, uh, there are different ways of doing this. You can either um, use uh, you can either either just shortcut the battery or uh, essentially there's a, a heating circuitry inside the vehicle that will uh, tell it uh, to pre-warm the battery so it's at a operating temperature where it's sure that you're not gonna use any um, or, uh, that you're not gonna produce any dendrites now um, I just put in the auto steer uh, just to check a little bit our consumption here. So as I was driving down the mountain, I was uh, very close to 200 watt hours per kilometer that I recuperated. And now as we're driving up the mountain, um, we're actually uh, consuming much more. So um, uh, practically uh, what, uh, what the car told me is, well, you know, as you're driving uh, down the mountain, yeah, you're, you're gaining energy and as you're driving up the mountain, you're of course using energy again. Now, um, the amount that, and, and I, I just feel that, you know, for a nerd like me, this is, this is, a, this is a great uh, uh, thing to know. Um, because essentially, uh, you, you can always feel, okay, am I, am I driving uh, in, in a proper way, let's say, where I'm, I'm really uh, consuming uh, not so much energy or am I driving like a crazy guy? Uh, you know, on the autobahn, uh, uh, way above uh, 200 kilometers uh, per hour. Now, um, I have to say, the I have winter tires, and um, now a lot of people are asking this question, like, oh, you know, in the winter with batteries, how is it there? Um, isn't isn't the range like essentially zero when you have a battery? No. So, why is that? So typically what happens in a battery is when you have a battery that is cold, it produces less voltage. So electrons never get lost. lost. So the total, uh, let's say, charge um, that you have in your battery is still there. However, the uh, electrons uh, or the ions, in fact, that are moving, um, uh, they are just at a, uh, they just give you less voltage. And uh, as you might know that uh, watt hours or joule is the product of uh, current times potential times time and um, then uh, as you have a lower potential with uh, lower temperatures uh, the the total energy that your battery can deliver is less now um, how can you come around this uh, you can preheat in fact your your, your battery before you uh, start a trip um, you can do this typically when you have a wall charger at home uh, however, this is of course using energy. Um, for a gasoline driven car, it of course doesn't make that much of a difference. What I discovered for myself is in fact using winter tires over summer tires um, is almost as bad as having low temperatures in, in terms of range. The range, yes, it's less, but I would, uh, I would put that uh, on the same realm as you know having a higher consumption uh, with winter tires and summer tire than summer tires uh, and it's it's you know you can you can deal with it if you if you know what you have to prepare for